we have uh, which you have to keep in your mind that uh, this choroid it have the blood vessels and uh, pigment cells right just yes choroid it have uh, iris uh, it give color to the eyes right and uh, then retina is made up of two kind of the cell i want your 100% focus over here okay retina is made up of that is very important for you retina is made up of two kind of the cell or rod cells and cone cells one additional thing i want to tell you that those animals which are nocturnal means those animal which have capability to uh, which have capability to see into night right means night vision uh, they have the capability of night vision uh, like uh, owl right and there are number of the nocturnal animals which come like li uh, owl lemurs some cat they have capability to see in the night so actually they, uh, they have the lots lots of rod cells owl have lots of rod cells so they can uh, see clearly in the night time but in the day time they cannot see so in retina there are two kind of the cell rod cells and cone cells rod cells they are meant for the vision at the night time means they facilitate us to see at the night time we have rod cells but the comparatively they are lesser in our uh, eyes then there are total 120 to 125 million rod cells right rod cells have a chemical or component called rhodopsin rhodopsin is made up of that is very important rhodopsin is made up of two things opsin and retinin right retinin retinin basically is made up of vitamin a okay then number of the cone cells are one plus uh, 6.3 6.3 to 6.8 million uh, they help vision at the day time their color uh, the uh, color uh, they they are responsible for detection of the color we know there are only three color in this world basically we can see only three color in this world the rest of the color are combination of all these three we know we we have uh, learned it and the uh, our uh, that art and craft classes that there are only three color and that is true primary color are only three science also says there are three types rgb you can uh, you can adjust these three color only in your television or uh, in your desktop laptop uh, in your phone you can't uh, change other colors right so because other other colors they do not exist so rbg red green and blue so uh, this cone cells have three kind of the pigment or component chemicals pyrrhopsin idopsin and Syropsin, right? Pyrrhopsin, idopsin, and syropsin. Pyrrhopsin is responsible for uh, red color. Idopsin responsible for green color. Syropsin is responsible for blue color, right? Is that clear? So this yes, was okay. important. This mechanism is not that much important, but I will explain you for, for you. I want to just give you idea how the vision, how the uh, vision mechanism work right look so light come from the come from outside the cornea is a transparent part so definitely cornea is a transparent part just So uh, the light light comes from the uh, outside. So light reaches after uh, 
a reflection of, from any object. Uh, it reaches uh, to the eye and it crosses the cornea part. This is the cornea part. Cornea is a transparent, so it crosses the cornea part. It reaches inside. Here is the liquid. We have already discussed that this liquid is called aqueous humor. Then uh, this is the lens. Then reaches to the lens, and this is the iris. So uh, there is a uh, a hole like structure that is called pupil. So it uh, penetrates inside the pupil. It goes through the pupil because this is the only point from where the light can enter and can reach to the lens. Then it will reach to the lens. Lens will focus it on the retina. Light will fall on the retina. On the retina. Formation of image will take place. Till this point, these are the optical signals, right? They are the light signals. They are the optical signals. Now, optical signal have to be converted into chemical signal and then into electrical impulse. This mechanism is done at the part of the retina. Now you can see this is the retina. This is the lateral section of retina. The first layer of retina. This is this is retina. Then uh, the base base of retina is made up of ganglion cells. After ganglion cell, there are bipolar cells, right? After bipolar cell, there is a rod cells, then cone cells, and then there are these nerve cells. So what happened? These ganglion, they, uh, these ganglion, they take the uh, the slide and they convert them into chemical signal, right? They convert them into chemical signal. Chemical signal. What is the chemical signal? These all component like retinol and uh, other kind of these pigment, they start breaking down. These pigment, right? Pyropsin will break down and it will uh, receive the sense of red. Hydropsin will break down. Cytopsin will break down, right? And rhodopsin will break down. When rhodopsin will break down, these bipolar cells they generate, they convert the chemical signal. So what happens when this component will break down? What will happen? These these bipolar cells they will convert the chemical signal into what? Chemical signal into electrical impulses. These electrical impulses are taken by the optic nerves. These optic nerve take the signal to the brain, then the formation of image take place. Right. So first, light signals are converted into what chemical signal. Chemical signal converted into nerve impulse. Nerve impulse are taken to the brain, right, and then the formation of image takes place. That's how the formation of image takes place. Is that clear? Or any doubt in this in this part? Now, what is important for you? What you have to cram? At any cost, you have to cram this thing. Rhodopsin, pyroxin, adopsin, cytopsin. What is their function? Where where they are found? That is the question. Any doubt? Clear? No, sir. Yes. Okay, great. Now human ear is struck. Uh, human ear is not that much tough. Don't be panic, right? What I say that you have to remember that you have to remember. Fine. Here, mechanism of listening, you won't get question from the mechanism of listening. You will get the question from anatomical part. And you have to uh, clearly understand what is the anatomical part. So, uh, this is external part of the ear. That is called pinna. This is pinna. Then there is a tube-like structure. From this tube-like structure, this, uh, this is called ear canal. This ear canal is also known as auditory matus. Right? Auditory matus is ear pipe right wave enter through the ear pipe and then they collide to the membrane called tympanum eardrum or tympanum membrane right? the wave collide over here there are certain elastic cartilages right and there are certain wax gland right these wax gland they protect and uh, protect our ear from the germs and all that right elastic cartilages they keep it is flexible right then uh, wave enter into here. Here, from here, this green color chamber, this is called middle ear. Middle ear have bony structure. They have three bones, right? So malus, incus, and stapes. There are the three bones. Stapes is the smallest bone of the body, which is found in the ear. This is middle part. Then what happened? The extra sound goes out of through eustachian. This eustachian tube remains connected with the middle ear, and it is it then get correct to the our mouth part, right? It maintain the pressure. First thing, what is the function of eustachian tube? Eustachian tube have been asked. What is the recently it have been asked? What is the function of eustachian tube? First thing, it remains connected with the mouth, so it maintain the pressure. Then, uh, then second thing, second thing that it uh, uh, remove the extra sound. Then, 
this is the internal ear right internal ear is this is this is this part is called cochlea right and this upper part is called organ of balance it maintain the balance of the body right and from here there are nerves these nerves connect the ear to the brain and uh, that's how we sense the some sound right external ear is made up of pinna auditory mantis tympanic membrane means which is called cardin this eardrum and wax gland wax gland are also known as the cerebellum gland right middle ear it is made up of tympanic cavity this cavity green color cavity you stake in tube this is stake in tube and ear ossicles mean these these bone internal ear is made up of in, in internal ear look this is the internal ear there is a liquid that is called perilymph right perilymph here the cerebrospinal fluid remains filled so this this organ of fertile this part organ of fertile internal ear right this part this cochlea part it keep on floating in this fluid internal ear have perilymph or cerebrospinal fluid right now come to the structure of toothing middle ear so first this middle ear i said to you that this is a green color cavity this is called middle ear and this is made up of three, three kind of the a bone that you have to understand this is eardrum with the help of eardrum first bone is connected hammer from eardrum this hammer this uh, mat, uh, this this is called metus right so malleus sorry this is called malus it is hammer like structure so this is called malus malus take the vibration from malus it reaches to the incus and incus to the stapes so there are these are the three bone of the ear so how many bones are found in ear six three in this ear and three in this ear right try to understand right and keep uh, keep it in your mind because you will get this kind of the question look this is the internal ear internal ear is made up of two part right this part is called cochlea this is called cochlea right this cochlea this cochlea part and this part is made up of three pipeline three tubes right there is a lateral uh, uh, semi circular canal posterior semi circular canal and superior semi circular canal so it is made up of three three semi circular canal the cochlea have some hair right hair like structure which receive the sound wave and they convert into impulses what is the name of the hair like structure which is found in the inner layer of the cochlea they are called organ of cartilage organ of cartilage organ of cartilage or hair like structure they receive the sense of the sound and transfer to the nerves by with the help of nerve species to the brain that's how we uh, listen the listening is it clear Yes, sir. Fine. So this was the structure of ear. Mechanism of listening, you don't require that. so that's it for this chapter uh, and uh, ask me if you have any question in this chapter then we will move to the next chapter tell me if you have any doubt in this chapter okay fine what is labyrinth actually uh, inside this inside this part uh, this uh, this one semi circular canal so semi circular canal have uh, uh, arpit they have there is a fluid right uh, that fluid uh, uh, th th that that fluid is called librea right and there is a membrane and then fluid this fluid maintain the balance of our body so i ear are not meant for only listening they also maintain the balance of our body okay sir any more question Fine. So again, go through with this chapter after the class.
come with your doubt and keep on solving the uh, question paper. Are you people solving the previous year question paper or not? Tell me. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So, locomotion and movement, we, we did not uh, cover this chapter, right? No? We didn't cover this chapter. We have to start with this chapter. So, we covered. Fine. This is also a chapter where you have to learn lots of lots of things. Uh, okay, but again, don't be panic. I'll make you understand what to learn, what not to learn. Right? Fine. So this is human skeletal system. You all know what is the human skeletal system. Right? So human skeletal system. The skeleton system is better form of uh, two kind of the, uh, or we can divide it into two parts. Exoskeleton and endoskeleton. What is the exoskeleton? So exoskeleton like these hair, mustache, beard, this outer part of the skin, nails, right? They all are the part of exoskeleton. I mean the skeleton system which is found outside of the body and the function is to protect our body. Then another one is endoskeleton, right? Now the endoskeletal system is made up of two things, bone and uh, skeletal muscle. It is made up of two, bones and skeletal muscle, right? Uh, bones are basically uh, made up of some uh, cells and calcium and phosphate, we'll discuss, right? And uh, skeletal muscles, they are just muscular part, right? And uh, here, basically, we will deal with the bone and cartilage. Bone, not cartilage. Some part to extend the cartilage. What is the function of cartilage system? Or function of our uh, endoskeletal system to support our body, protection of body, muscle attachment, movement. It maintains the body shape, means body form. Blood formation, help in blood production, bone marrow. Breathing and hearing, we know that in breathing, their bones are required. Then hearing, we know there are three bones which help in hearing. Mineral reservation, calcium, phosphate, the kind of the mineral get preserved over here. When body is required or deficiency, is there deficiency in the blood, then they supply these chemicals, these minerals to the blood. So we have to learn the name of that bones also. No, no, no. The number of bones you have to learn. What I say that learn only the, those parts. What I say, I'll uh, tell you what what will be the question. Let me uh, uh, make you understand. Now you will come to know. That's why I do. Uh, that's why I say always go through with the previous year question paper, right? Or try to understand. It. Like there was a question from this PPT which is visible in front of your screen. Uh, there was a question, how many bones are found in the face? Which of the following is not facial bone? Right. Which of the following is the skull bone? Right. And sphenoid bone is a part of that kind of the question. So look. So this complete part which is visible, this complete part, this is called a skull, right? Uh, the upper part of the bone, this part, right? Which uh, cover the brain part, right? It protect our brain part. So this is called cranium, right? Cranium is known as brain bone. Brain uh, remains kept inside it and remains safe inside it, right? So it is made up of eight bones, right? It is called brain bone. Then there are three bones, six bones which is not visible. We have un uh, understood those bones: iris, incus, and uh, sorry, uh, malus, incus, and stipe. 
right so there are two malus two incus two scapula so these bones are found inside the ear so you cannot see inside the skull so you cannot see them right and then third part is hyoid bone this this bone you can see this is called hyoid bone right and the fourth part is bone of face so we divide the skull into three parts bone of cranium then ear sockets which are which we cannot see then hyoid bone this bone sometime some uh, try to understand some scientist include this bone hyoid bone into part of the cranium but some scientists are not agree some of them says that it's a part of respiratory system it's a respiratory bone it have nothing to do with the uh, skull but still we study it in the great part of the skull then a fourth a fourth one is bone of face there are 14 bone of the face one vomer one palatine and two inferior nasal cavity these five bones you cannot see why vomer is found this part inside inner part right palatine bone this upper bone this you cannot see that right inferior nasal cavity they they are found inside the nose so these are the bone which you cannot see you have to take care of that right they are not visible in the diagram fine now come to the facial bone so how when you first come to the cranium part of the cranium the eight bone look this bone is found in the front it is called frontal bone this is frontal bone right found in the front parietal bones means roof top right so there are one frontal bone frontal bone is just one single then there is a parietal so there are two parietal bones temporal means the the bones of the temporal side there are two temporal bones occipital means back of this skull this is latin occipital means back of the so one occipital so how many bones are 1 2 3 2 5 and 6 right these are the six bones which are the found and uh, so where are the rest of the uh, two bones can you tell me yes look or on the other side of the skull exactly exactly this one is sphenoid this bone it is a separate bone this bone the small bone it is if you put pressure so there are two sphenoid bone right and one ethmoid bone so these are the total eight bones two to six two to four to six one this And this one this right. So there are total of so ethmoid sphenoid bone have been asked. It's a part of the cranium, part of the skull as well as part of cranium. This is wedge shape, look like this. Ethmoid bone is found inside this this uh, like at the bit of this this eyeball. Clear? Eight bones. I have written with the help of blue color. Then ah uh, the facial bones. I have. Uh, Uh, written them with the red color. I have demarcated the market, the with the red. Right. So, start from here. This is important. There are two lacrimal bones. Uh, I have uh, uh, I have gone through with the human physiology, and I I was reading there was a lacrimal gland. What are the lacrimal gland? What is their function? Can anybody tell me what are the lacrimal gland? What are their function? So, if I am in the eye, which help in the lubrication? Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm yes. not sure. They are eye wash and lubrication. Very good. Excellent. Yes, yes. They are they are the uh, they are meant for the uh, eye wash. So, lacrimal gland are basically in general language we can call them tear gland. They wash the eye, they clean the eye, and they keep these eye moist. Right. Otherwise. the blinking of uh, eyes uh, eyelids must might be a problem but they keep on lubricating it right so lacrimal glands are basically tear gland they are found here right so the bones which are found that's how you have to remember right the bones which are found below the tear gland they are called lacrimal bone clear so there are two lacrimal bones now nasal bone we know that there are two nasal bone means nostril this they make the our nose that is then there are two zygomatic bone zygomatic means cheek bone zygomatic means cheek bone so those bones which are found in our cheeks they are called zygomatic bone so two lacrimal two nasal two zygomatic then this part this upper jaw is called maxilla so two upper jaw means two maxilla bones half this part and half this part this is separate bone right so two maxilla 
one mandible this is single piece one mandible so this mandible with chin part right lower jaw one mandible so these are the facial bones now uh, there are five more bones five more facial bones which we cannot see vomer palatine bone one vomer two palatine bone and two inferior nasal quenchi right so how many bones are two to six two to four to six to eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen right so total fourteen bones and ear cycle you know they are found inside our ear part and we have discussed them in detail is that clear is is skull clear clear to all of you yes sir so calculate you may get the question look this question is not there and uh, how many bones are there in a skull now you can calculate you have to calculate actually remember you can get this kind of question how many bones are there so let's calculate the total bone 8 plus 6 that is 14 14 plus 14 28 this hyoid bone 29 so there are total 29 bones clear any doubt iram getting it either all clear anna yes sir Iram, what happened nowadays? You are not speaking anything, right? Uh, in the starting, you used to answer most of the questions. What happened? Is there any problem near your mic? I hardly get any uh, answer from your end. Iram, am I audible to you? Keep on answering. Keep on discussing. I feel happy when you question me. I feel happy when you tell something to me. Right. So uh, even I enjoy that. Right. So always keep on asking. You know, I ask question uh, to uh, keep you uh, away. Right. Uh, so that you don't get sleep because you know online classes are a bit boring kind of a thing. Right. Even uh, after long classes, even I get bored. Right. So I want you to get involved. Keep on uh, like keep on interacting. Uh, keep on asking something. Keep on telling something. What can be maximum? If I am asking a question to you, what can be maximum? The maximum what can be that that may be the wrong, but uh, answering wrong that is not a sin. It's a nowhere written that that you can you can't answer uh, like uh, you can't answer uh, any question as a wrong question, right? As a wrong answer, you can't give time wrong. Answer. You can give. So keep on telling me when I ask. give some pain to your brain that would be helpful for you okay so now uh, uh, i have seen the question this sacrum is the fusion of how many bones three bones four bones five bones that kind of a question so kaisal is a fusion of what is the vertebral formula that question so look there are two types this diagram and this type This diagram is from the front. This diagram is from the side. I mean, let us right. Uh, human backbone have these three, uh, these four curves, and that make us different from the that make us different from the apes, gorilla, and all that. This is this was the revolutionary change. With the help of this change, we evolve as a human. We are that much um, energetic and that much uh, sophisticated kind of the animal of the earth, right? So look, the first part, first curve is known as the cervical. Cervix means neck. Second part is thoracic. Thoracic means respiratory. Third part is lumbar means digestive. Sacrum means the lower part. Focaisal means the tail, tail part, right? So there are these are the curves, right? Cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and neck. We have divided backbone into basically five parts: cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, and neck. The backbone is made up of this backbone is made up of thirty-three small small bones. These bones are known as vertebrae. So single bone of the 
but uh, vertebral column or symbol bone of the spinal cord is known as the vertebrae right they unite and form a backbone so 33 vertebrae unite to form a backbone in a in a infant or in a child there are total 33 vertebrae in backbone but when we grow up what happen the last last this last bone of our body so uh, the bone of the sacrum last nine bone they get fused into two right the nine bone get fused and they become into two right so seven vertebrae are found in the cervical part 12 vertebrae are found in the thoracic part Five vertebrae are found in the lumbar part. Sacrum is made up of one and cogizal is made up of one. So there are total 26 bones in the backbone. But sacrum and cogizal are fusion of some bone. So sacrum is fusion of five bones. The five bones get fused and they become one. Right? Okay. So five become one. So five minus one. How many bones are get fused? Four bones. So here 33 minus four. I have written here minus four. Right? Again. Cocaizal is the fusion of four bones. Four become one. So I have four minus one. That is a three bone. Three bone have been fused. They disappeared. So minus three. So there are total 26 bone in the vertebral column of adult. Is it clear or not? You have to remember the sacrum and cocaizal and how many bones are found in the infant. How many bones are found in the adult? Right. This is the vertebral formula. What is the vertebral formula? T7, T12, L5, S5 gamma, C4 gamma. Means this is the cervical 7, thoracic 12, lumbar uh, 5, and uh, sacrum 5 gamma, means united, and cocaizal 4 gamma. Right? This is the vertebral formula. Is it clear? Backbone clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Now come to the bone of rib or rib cage. This rib cage. So I have told you what are the quest, what were the question? What can be the question? How many bones are found in the thoracic part of the backbone? That can be question. So you have to remember the backbone formula. What kind of the question you will get from here? Look. This is the rib cage, and it protects many soft organ like heart like lungs liver and all that. it also gives a shape to our body okay now this this bone which is found at the mid this is called the sternum so this diagram is of the sternum this bone right the sternum is better for basically three parts this upper head part that is called manubrium right it is basically made up of three parts this upper part This upper part, this is called manubrium, right? This is called manubrium. This part is called body, and the last part, this is called ziphoid process. This is called ziphoid process, right? The manubrium have two uh, notch where this, where the clavicle remains fit. Right? It is 15 centimeter long. It look like a dagger shape. It helps in respiratory. Right? It's simple. So this is this is made up of three. Okay. Now try to understand the rib cage. This is called a sternum. Okay. Now after the sternum. Uh, this is uh, this is a sternum, this part. So a sternum is a dagger shaped structure, and you know the sternum. Now come to the ribs. So there are ribs. There are one to seven number ribs pair. It's called true ribs. Why we call them true ribs? Look, first very important thing that ribs are not ribs does not remain directly connected with the backbone. Right? They just they just back part remains just uh, fit with the backbone it is not fused with the backbone and in the front part try to understand this, this is the first tip try to understand 
this front part is not directly fused with the stone. It fuses with the help of some flexible structure. They are called cartilages, right? So these these are called cartilages. These cartilages are known as the coastal cartilage. Their name is the coastal cartilage, right? So these coastal cartilages. These are the coastal cartilages. Coastal cartilages help the uh, these ribs to get attached. That's why they are the flexible. That's why when we uh, when we breathe in, it expands. When we breathe out, it uh, it contracts. Right. So that's why the flexibility is there. They are made up of a cartilage. That cartilage name is hyaline cartilage. The type of the cartilage is the hyaline. So basically, this is coastal cartilage. Name is the coastal cartilage, and its type is hyaline cartilage. Now, from the rib number eight to eight, nine, and tenth pair, they are called false ribs. Why? Because these ribs they do not directly connect with. Try to understand. These ribs, this one, first this rib, second this rib, and the third this rib. These ribs do not directly connect with the uh, sternum. They indirectly connect with the sternum. Basically, they fuses with the seventh pair of the uh, seventh pair of the rib. Right, so uh, they are called false ribs. The eleventh and twelfth are called floating ribs because they never connect with the, any of the part of the body. Right, they keep on floating. They protect. The scientist said that says that their function is to protect our kidney. That that's why their structure is uh, like this way. Right, so eleventh and twelfth is called. That's it. So go through with it and tell me, is it clear or not? Clear. Marita, clear? Yes, sir. Samira? Yes, sir. Good. Fine. So, uh, come to the next one. Pectoral girdle. Basically, this shoulder is called pectoral girdle. This shoulder. And it's a ball socket joint. It's a freely movable joint, right? So basically, the uh, pectoral uh, girdle is made up of two bones: clavicle and scapula. Right? Clavicle, this clavicle and scapula. So this is called clavicle, and this blade-like triangular blade-like bone is called scapula. Right, this clavicle. It uh, in weaker people you can see this clavicle, right? So this this bone, this front bone, which is visible to the weak people, this is called clavicle, right? Then the scapula is the backbone which you feel the. This is the triangular bone that is called a scapula. It is called shoulder blade. Scapula is known as shoulder blade. In the scapula itself, there is a depression. There is a girdle-like structural depression. This is called glenoid cavity. In glenoid cavity, head of humor revolve, right? So uh, this is called uh, the pectoral girdle. This, this structure is called pectoral girdle. Look, this is clavicle. This is scapula. This is the uh, head of uh, humerus, right? And this here is a bone called acromion process. It connects clavicle with the uh, scapula, right? So this is called. Will you remember that? Yes, sir. Okay. Bone of arms. I have seen a question in my uh, last year question paper. 
um, there was a question how many bones are found in the hand very simple 30 and the same 30 number is found in the uh, just So there are total uh, 30 bones, right? Out of 30 bone, we have this this uh, shoulder part that we have already understood. Uh, the bones of the hand start from here, this one. So first is humerus, this bone. This is a strong bone. This is called humerus. Right? This part is made up of basically two bones. This complete part is made up of two bones, basically. So uh, It is made up of two bones, radius and ulna, right? Then there is a wrist part, wrist part. So this is wrist part. This wrist part is made up of uh, basically eight bones, right? These bones are known as the carpals. They are ball kind of bones. They are uh, they, these bones are like ball, and there are total eight balls and four in a row, right? So this kind of the uh, carpals are formed. Then there are five metacarpals, right? Metacarpal, they not, they never move. They are not a movable bones, right? Then there are finger. Fingers are called phalanges. So finger are there are fourteen phalanges. Means the bones of the finger are known as the phalanges. The formula is two is to three is to three is to three is to three. Two bones are found in the uh, this one, thumb, and uh, rest of the finger they have three three bones. So there are total fourteen bones. This is phalangeal phenomena, uh, phalangeal formula, right? So in total there are thirty. Tell me, bones of hand clear or not? Remember the phalangeal formula. That question I have seen. Phalangeal formula. You have to remember that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pelvic girdle. So pelvic girdle is just the girdle which is found in our uh, high part. So look, both of the hips are made up of three bones, right? Means three three bones. So one hip is made up of three bones, and hip bone is all known as innominate bone, right? So the bone which makes the complete hip, we call that innominate. Or hip. Innominate bone is uh, uh, innominate bones are there are three innominates: ilium, ischium, and pubis, right? And uh, from here, from the hip bone or innominate bone, the longest nerve of the our body or longest neuron of the body that travels, that is known as the sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve is the longest nerve which is found which travel from here, right? Now come to here. So ilium, this is ilium, this is pubis, and this is ischium, right? So ilium, ischium, or pubis, and this is femur part, right? So ilium, ischium, and pubis fuses, and they make a depression. This depression is called acetabulum, right? And this is acetabulum, the head of high rotation. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what do you have to remember? You will get the question in uh, 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 when you will uh, this one when you will solve your previous question paper. Uh, you will encounter a question. The question was that uh, which of the following is a part of in a minute bone? Hip bone is was not given there. Right, innominate bone. So remember, innominate bone. They are talking about the innominate bone. Means they are talking about the hip bone. Sciatic nerve. Remember, that's why I have written. I have already told you in the neural part. The bones of the leg. 
again there are 30 bones of the legs right in bone of the hand and bone of the leg there is one thing knee cap is not found in the hand remember knee cap is not found in the hand we haven't seen that knee cap was not there but here the tarsals they are the carpal there are eight carpal here are seven tarsals so here one bone minus but one bone get plus so total again the bone are 30 so our leg and the hand both are made up of 30 34 keep it in So, ilium, ischium, pubis, that is made that is innominate bone, it makes the hip part. The uh, leg part starts from here. This is femur. This is the longest or the strongest bone of her body. Then there is a patella. Patella is called kneecap. Right? Then again, the lower part of the uh, ha uh, leg is made up of two bones, tibio and fibula. Right? From tibio and fibula, this ankle part is made up of, so wrist part was made up of uh, carpels. So, there were eight carpels. Here, the ankle part is made up of seven tarsals. So, in place of eight, there are seven tarsals. Then, again, the same. There are five metatarsals. Again, the phalangeal formula is same. Two is to three is to three is to three is to three. Right? So, there are total 30 bones. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Joints. So joints, joints of bone. Right? So joints of the bone are basically uh, there are three types of the joints. Fibrous or immovable joints. These joints never move. Means they are the joints, like in our skull. Right. So our skull, we have already discussed that this our uh, uh, cranium part. It is made up of the eight bone. But do they move? No. They no. They did not right so skull the bones remain fit with each other like this so there is not any movement between fine so they are called fibrous bone or they are immobile bone because movement is not there they are called fibrous bone because they remain stitched with the fiber like this. then cartilages or slightly movable joints cartilages joints or slightly movable joints are those joints where uh, a very small movement is there, right? Because between the bone there is a cartilage which is small. Then third part is called synovial or freely movable joint. Synovial or freely movable joint where the free movement is there. Look, this is the fibrous or the uh, immovable joint, right? They are immovable. So look, the joint which is found, these are the joint which is found between the skull, they are called satin, right? Then they are on fixed point. Teeth between the teeth and the gums, the jaw. So there are immovable joints. Again, uh, between the tibio and fibula, movement is not there. So these all are the fixed joint example. Then there are slightly movable joints. Try to understand. Between our backbone. So we have already discussed that backbone is made up of some small bone, 30, uh, uh, some uh, 26 uh, small bone in an adult. So between those small bone, a very little movement takes place. Between two bones, so it means between two vertebra, there is a cushion-like structure. With the help of the cushion, there is a little movement, right? So this is body of vertebra, another vertebrae. Between two vertebrae, there is a band of fibrocartilage, fibrous and cartilages uh, uh, band, which is filled with the gelatin, right? So this is, and there is a slight movement. The same thing between two hips. The movement between two hips is very small because uh, they remain joined with the uh, fibrocartilages disc and uh, this is known as the sympasis pubis, right? And so the joint between the sympasis pubis or between two innominate bone that is called the uh, that is the uh, cartilages joint or uh, slightly moved. Right. Tell me, guys, both joint, both joints are clear or not? Sir, yes. this one can show movement. Sorry, which one? Sir, it's a cartilages joint. There is a very small movement like this way. So they just like. Move like this way. So 
suppose that they between these two when suppose that uh, there are two bottles right between these two bottles there are uh, some uh, there is a some sponges like structure so you can move like a sponge the compression yes, of the sponge will provide the little move clear to all of you both of joints yes then i have seen a question that synovial fluid is secreted from dash 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 fill in the blank so the third category of joint is known as the synovial joint or really known as look try to understand uh, here uh, i have seen two type of joint which of the following is synovial joint synovial fluid is secreted by that question i have seen twice or thrice uh, or which of the following is correct about the synovial joint and uh, one more question name the cartilage which is found in the head of bones so look this is the bone of leg when it's a structure of knee so uh, between these two bone at the head of the bone there is cartilage and this cartilage is known as the articular cartilage right this is articular cartilage so the name of the cartilage is articular why because articulation takes place so if the cartilage will not be there what will happen there will be a friction between the bone right and due to that friction that this bone the head of the bone uh, uh, head of the bone will get broken and the joint become unstable so what happen the head of these uh, bones are made up of articular cartilage so sometime if they collide so the collision is prevented like from any job then uh there is a membrane this membrane is a structure that membrane is known as the synovial membrane synovial membrane is made up of secretory epithelium try to understand synovial membrane is made up of secretory epithelial cell these secretory epithelial cell secrete the synovial fluid right this secrete secrete synovial secret synovial the synovial fluid have consistency like egg white right and it help in the movement right movement of this really moving joint tell me is it clear or not is that clear yes so here you have to remember from where the synovial fluid comes what is the function of synovial fluid right and what is the type of cartilage this articular type uh, articular cartilage are a type of high line cartilage uh now types of how many types of synovial joint are found in our body you can get the question from the uh, example right first joint is known as the pivot joint try to understand the pivot joint is found between the atlas and axis right this so that kind of the movement this atlas and axis right they make the radius and ulna right so the bones of our hand this radius and ulna so they have pivot joint right then the so the movement can take place like this way now come to the second joint second joint is known as saddle joint saddle joint then their movement will can be taken it in two places right we can move hand like this and this way and from here to here right so limited movement but movement can take place in two planes right so this is this is these are called saddle joint saddle joint are found in the carpal and metacarpal right carpal and metacarpal so between the carpal this one and metacarpal this one, right 
so there is a very limited thing then uh, thumb and hand between the thumb and hand this is the movement right so this is called shadow joint hinge joint hinge joint they just open in one direction they cannot move they just like hand this can be open in one direction only from here to here right it cannot be moved it cannot move front direction or it cannot go right or left part right so uh, that is called hinge joint so hinge joint is found elbow knee and ankle then plane joint in the plane joint there is a no uh, there is a very limited movement in plane joint the head of two bones are very uh, are get fit with the, each other and this is plane right so like between the tarpel between the tarsal right so uh, this is called plane joint right another joint that is called ball socket joint in ball socket joint it is multi axial uh, we can uh, revolve or uh, rotate our leg like this way this way right you can uh, you can uh, do the movement any kind of movement with the help of your leg so this is called ball socket joint one part work as a socket and another point work as a ball right so there is a this uh, uh, glenoid cavity right this glenoid cavity where uh, the head of a uh, humerus it get filled uh, get fit so one this bone is working as a, this bone, head of this bone is working as a ball and uh, this shoulder shoulder it working as a uh, socket so this is called ball socket joint in ball socket joint there is a free movement can be done in all direction right last but not the least the last one is called ellipsoidal joint this is found between the metacarpal and phalanges right between the metacarpal and phalanges right this is called the ellipsoidal joint so you have to remember the example of the type of the joint so there are total six kind of joint pivot saddle hinge uh, plane or gliding and uh, ball socket joint and uh, ellipsoidal joint tell me is it clear or not go through with it these you have to cram write it down joint one side write it down joint and in front of that the example all clear yes sir now it comes to the sliding filament theory uh in sliding filament theory you have to understand the mechanism uh from you don't have to describe the mechanism so but you have i will i will keep on telling you what kind of the question you will get the maximum question which i have seen they were from the structural part not the functional part. sliding filament theory nobody will ask you what is the sliding filament theory but you will get the question from the proteins right which is the monomer which is the dimer right and uh, where it is found right? what is the function of sarcoplasmic reticulum right uh, troponin protein are a part of that kind of a question fine so focus on the structural part of it and it's easy to learn the structural part of this one try to understand this is the skeletal muscle right so skeletal muscles are made up of Uh, 
they are straighted muscle or voluntary muscles uh straightened muscles because they have the uh, band between them and dark and light color band and they are voluntary muscles because we can control them with the help of our uh, wish so uh, these muscles are made up of small small structure and the unit the basic unit is called microfibril microfibril have two kind of the band dark band and light band why dark and light band because it is made up of two type of the protein a darker color protein and a lighter protein so dark and light band are found in the muscle these muscles fiber have myoglobin pigment that is important very important. these muscle fiber have myoglobin pigment myoglobin pigment is same like hemoglobin it provide oxygen to the muscles and it impart red color to the muscle right myoglobin then they remains attached with the skeletal structure right potassium is most abundant potassium is most abundant substance they store glycogen and they contain atp the store glycogen and they uh, uh, they contain atp for uh, functioning they have sarcoplasm their uh, uh, protoplasm is known as sarcoplasm they contain mini nucle many nucleus means more than one nucleus is found in single cell and this condition is called sensi sensi uh, uh, condition right this is called sensial remember fungi i have described the same thing when contain more than one nucleus so tell me is it clear or not this is structural part clear yes then i have enlarged try to understand and uh, wherever you get confused you have to ask i have enlarged this part so this is in enlarged diagram this uh, look like like this way it is made up of it is made up of two kind of the protein right sarcomere is made up of two kind of the protein that you need to understand this green color part is called actin protein and this uh, blue color part is called myosin protein right actin and myosin actin is made up of thin filament and myosin is made up of thick filament right we will describe we will discuss that what is the composition of actin what is the composition of myosin try to understand portion of thick filament this portion of thick filament it is made up of this is called myosin filament myosin filament the monomer of myosin filament so this is made up of number of the molecule the monomer of myosin is known as meromyosin so basic unit of myosin protein is what meromyosin right meromyosin is a monomer monomer it's monomer which is meromyosin it is a dimer protein means it is made up of two molecule of protein right both of the molecule remains entangled with each other like the two snakes are entangled with each other the diagram is in front of you. myosin monomer which is known as the meromyosin it have two parts myosin molecule this is the neck and there is a head part right head part have actin binding site this is called atp binding site why because the atp ase enzyme is found over here and it produces the energy right so this is is that clear myosin protein clear what the question have been asked which is the monomer of myosin protein and the answer was meromyosin that's it. this kind of the question i have been asked from here is that clear yes sir yes sir okay again this is the portion of thin filament right means actin filament so that was the myosin filament and this is the portion of actin filament actin filament is made up of or actin protein or thin filament are made up of three type of the protein this green color string this green color thread is known as f actin right try to understand this green color so i have tried to show this is f actin f actin 
is made up of this this green color thread is f actin f and actin means f means filamentous so this is called filamentous actin because this is filament like structure it look like a bead at the single bead which is the sub unit or which is the uh, monomer or uh, monomer of this one this is called g actin so f actin is a filament of g actin clear you have a beaded um, string clear yes okay. sir so g actin what does it mean by g actin means globular actin because they are the spherical shape globular shape so globular actin throughout this f actin a yellow color protein which is running yellow color thread which is running this is called tropomyosin this is called tropomyosin tropomyosin hide please try to understand this tropo there is there is a dark green color part which is i hidden by or which is, which has been hide or masked by the tropomyosin this is the active site of the active site so active site is covered or masked active site is covered or masked with the tropomyosin and between the tropomyosin in some distance there is a protein a globular protein known as the troponin so in the nut shell uh, this uh, myoactin protein is made up of three type of the protein troponin f actin and tropomyosin tell me is that clear actin and myosin structure or not you will get question from here there are fair enough chance yes sir very good harpit got it samaira yes sir clear Great. Anna, clear? Yes, sir. Fine. So, now sliding filament theory try to understand how the muscles slide over each other if this video is working then i will play this video for you is working or not okay. yes it is working look this is the head of protein uh this is muscle sarcomere actin and myosin protein thick filament and thin filament myosin is thick filament and actin is thin filament you can see from here when muscle contract try to understand when muscle contract what happen when muscle when suppose that i have i have i i did this hand like this way contracted then what will happen muscles will contract they will slide in when i will relax the hand like this way what will happen they will slide out that's how the contraction and relaxation takes place and that's how our organ works contraction when they will contract when masses will come from when masses will run from the try to understand when vessel when the any motor nerve bring the masses this is called motor plate so when motor nerve bring the masses or order then what will happen there are sarcoplasmic reticulum they will start releasing the calcium when they will release the calcium then what will happen then contraction will take place here what is happening that this this protein this filament which is running across this is tropomyosin tropomyosin protein have covered the active site of the what g actin right that's why these head are unable to make the point 
until unless the head of neuromyosin do not make bond the sliding cannot take place right but what will happen when the signal will come when calcium ion will be released calcium ion will reach to the troponin protein troponin protein will ask tropomyosin to hide out the affecting part then bond formation will take place calcium ion came troponin attached with the troponin tropomyosin change its shape then what happen myosin binding site open means active site open then atp will break down due to breakage of atp a formation of bond will take place between the actin and myosin look formation of bond will take place extra energy will this energy will pull back this way now with the help of extra energy which is left they will come back again the atp will come they will come back that's how the sliding filament theory works did you got it or not yes sir great great got it then really awesome and, uh, now let me tell you the explain you the sliding filament theory i have made this diagram and notes so this is more than sufficient for you uh, go through with after the class uh, So look, in sliding filament theory again, this is the sarcomere, uh, thick myofilament, thin. Uh, this is thin myofilament means actin filament. So actin filament are made up of three parts: actin, tropomyosin, and troponin. But the thin fil thick filament are made up of myosin protein. Then this is the diagram of myosin protein. Try to understand. In myosin protein, these are the monomer of myosin protein. They are known as the miromyosin. so miromyosin are basically dimer right that question i have been asked head head have two 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 structure actin binding site where they will make bond with the actin and atp binding site where atp will bond bond uh, atp will make a bond right provide the energy myosin monomer are miromyosin they are made up of two polypeptide chain helically arranged right helically arranged entangled with one another head work as a atp enzyme atp ase enzyme and it can break the atp into adp and release the energy myosin is a polymer or monomer is miromyosin miromyosin again tail is made up of light miromyosin means light protein head is made up of globular head is made up of heavy miromyosin it's heavy protein the structure of actin filament what happened people are getting disconnected people don't okay look uh this is the structure of actin filament actin filament is made up of three part actin affectin a affectin filament actin they are the there are two chains of g actin that make the affectin g actin is a monomer we have already discussed f actin is a polymer which is made up of many g actin right this is the diagram of g actin globular protein g actin there is a there is a, a part which is known as the myosin binding part where myosin protein of uh, make the contact then b this is tropomyosin tropomyosin it's a fibrous protein it runs close to the f actin we have seen troponin it is present in the tropomyosin look this is the mechanism where i have seen where i have shown uh, when uh, the masses will come or order will come they will start again they will start uh, absorbing calcium ion from outside due to which 
the vesicle filled with acetyl choline will start moving down they will bust between the uh, there is a junction or plate neuro muscular junction plate where the neuron and muscles uh, interact then third part this there are receptor on the sarcoplasmic reticulum uh, so, sorry there is a receptor in the sarcomere uh, these receptor will receive the acetyl choline and these receptor will enter inside the where they will enter inside the muscles inside the muscles there are a special type of the endoplasmic reticulum they are called sarcoplasmic reticulum this sarcoplasmic reticulum after entry of the acetyl choline they will release the calcium ion due to release of the calcium ion calcium ion will go calcium ion will attach with the troponin protein when it is attached with the troponin protein the uh, tropomyosin will uh, will change its structure so active site of the g active will open and bond formation will take place this is for this theory is called sliding filament theory but you will not get question from the magazine of sliding filament you will get the question from the structure of the muscles and structure of the uh, the structural part of these uh, muscle contraction actin and myosin tell me so uh, this was the last topic of this chapter we have completed this chapter as well and tell me if you have any doubt regarding this chapter go through with your ncrt tell me if you have any doubt